The Fallout fanboys are desperate, and it shows. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world, but war, war never Cut, cut, Ron. Can we get another retake with the new lines, please? All right, three, two, one, go. Instead, the Fallout TV show was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter in Fallout fandom history. For New Vegas elitists had succeeded in destroying the hype, but timelines, timelines never change. <laughs> All right, that's the- Are we gonna have uh, another disingenuous conversation about that every single person who did like the time, uh, the Fallout TV show is a New Vegas elitist? Are we really gonna have that? Really, again, because everyone knows this is a blatant lie. I personally know multiple people who watch the show who have never even heard of New Vegas. They don't even know what Fallout is, by the way, in general. And they didn't like the show also, some of them. So, are these people who have never played or even heard of Fallout New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas elitists? Is everyone who did not like the show just a mad Fallout New Vegas elitist? Also, what's wrong about being a Fallout New Vegas elitist? That is the highest benchmark that we have put on the Fallout series this far. It, ha it is the most quality, it has the best pretty much, well, everything, honestly. So, why shouldn't we be elitist and demand that everything Fallout related is at the bare minimum in the quality of Fallout New Vegas? Why? This is such a disingenuous way to, you know, have this conversation just, oh, everyone just who doesn't like it is an elitist. Low. Only obnoxious thing I'm gonna do this video. This is part three of an ongoing conversation this week. I originally was gonna take today off, focus on Retro Rebound and Rewind, but when I saw the news, I was like, oh boy, we gotta get to this one, don't we? So yeah, what we've been talking about is all involved in Fallout TV show spoilers. So if you have not watched the Fallout TV show yet and you don't want the ending ruined for you, feel free to click off now. But let's not delay any further. What should be the grand finale to this conversation until season two arrives? So for those who are still watching and not caught up, the big kerfuffle in the Fallout community has been surrounding retcons, which I have identified in two videos now as just incomplete story elements. One in particular that we'll be focusing on today Incomplete story elements. Okay, maybe this is the most disingenuous thing I have heard him say in a while. If you retcon something and your argument is, uh, 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 I know we completely retcon how things work and how history has unraveled, uh, but the show is not finished just yet. You need to wait until it finishes and then we will know. Bruh. If it's changed for no reason, it's changed no matter what. If one if one piece of media that is consi uh, considered canon tells you X and then comes the Fallout TV show that just completely rips that apart, says no, 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 none of that happened, this does not exist, this is how things really went, that is called a retcon. And it doesn't matter. If the Fallout TV series is gonna have one more episode, one more season, or ten more seasons, it's still a retcon, no matter how you put it. The fact that the story hasn't finished doesn't excuse it from being a retcon. Is the destruction of Shady Sands, an Ugh. important location in the Fallout universe, dating back to the original Fallout game, which has now been nuked. According to a chalkboard, we see that that may have happened in 2277, which would be placing it before Fallout New Vegas, and that would mean that if Fallout New Vegas is referencing Shady Sands, which it does multiple times, then we've just disturbed the sacred timeline. But as I said, timelines, timelines never change. And so we're gonna get into the official comments. What? What does that even mean? Timelines never change. Clearly they do. It's from Todd Howard and Jonathan Nolan, who have officially responded to this little bit of drama here. And we're going to get the official word on when exactly things happened in the Fallout timeline. So let's get to reading in this brief interview from IGN titled Fallout Official Timeline Confirmed How the Show Fits in with the games. According to Howard, showrunners Graham Wagner and Jennifer Robertson Dwaret came to him with the idea to blow up Shady Sands, something Howard says shocked him at first, but the event would serve as a catalyst 
for the main characters of the Fallout show, and the showrunners worked with Howard and the Bethesda team to ensure it remained consistent with the games. And we talked. Hey, he's right about one thing. The blowing up of Shady Sands honestly is the catalyst to most things that make completely no sense in the TV show at all. Like, how did Lucy, Lucy's mom, get out of the vault and, you know, no one noticed it? That's strange. Actually, three people also to oversee it. How did they not get noticed when they left the vault? How does Lucy not remember a single detail about the fact that she was like 7, 8, or 10 or something when she left the vault and went outside? <laughs> make it make sense. Talk through it, and it was this would be pretty impactful story moment that a lot of things anchor on. And by the way, that's just like you know one thirtieth roughly of things that make completely no sense in the show. Howard says, and we talked through it, and it was this would be a pretty impactful story moment that a lot of things anchor on. Howard, hey, I'm pretty sure uh, Todd Howard would be extremely ecstatic to just swipe New Vegas under the rug again, again. I'm a person that holds no pride, almost in anything. And yet, even I would instantaneously admit if I was in Todd Howard's position, I constantly get, uh, had to hear, Hey, when Fallout New Vegas is coming out, you know, the second part, you know, the best game that Bethesda has made, I would be grinding my teeth, because the reality is, Bethesda didn't make Fallout New Vegas. And that's probably pretty painful. Being the game studio that owns Fallout and the best Fallout game that you have, wildly considered, by the way, to be the best Fallout game, it's not even made by you. You have to listen every day, every day pretty much to people saying, when's New Vegas 2 coming out? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would also want to sw uh, swipe away everything. That, that is even remotely associated with that thing being launched. So yeah, you know, Sadie Shan's getting nuked. I, if I'm Todd Howard, I'm, I'm, I'm signing my name on that, okay? New Vegas destroyed, signing my name. Caesar's Legion never existed, signing away at that. It says, but for anyone confused about how the city could be blown up by the time the show takes place, Howard explains all the details of the timeline should line up. Quote, we're careful about the timeline, he says. So he doesn't explain anything, by the way. He just says, don't worry about it. It all lines up. The reality is nothing lines up and they just made a mistake. And since this is a mistake a lot of people are talking about because this very clearly doesn't fit in the law and even a blind man can see it. I honestly personally don't care that much, by the way, about this. Completely honestly. I... You know, it's a couple of years. This doesn't matter. They just made a mistake. And now, and now, this is the typical thing that companies do. When something bad happens, they just lie and say there's no problem. So, Todd Howard is once again doing what Todd Howard does the best. A.K.A. just lie non-stop. Arguably, no one even knows if his name is Todd Howard. Because he could prob he probably even lied about that. And, you know... This is just commonplace. Some some kind of problem like this comes out. Uh, people come out and say, Oh yeah, don't worry about it. This is all playing. This is all fine. Now nah, it's just a lie to make people get off their back. This is commonplace. M all companies do this constantly. But since it's Todd Howard that Bethesda... Oh no, he would never lie to us. Todd Howard who has lied like 50 times to us, he would never lie to us this time. When will you learn? There might be a little confusion in some places, but everything that happened in previous games, including New Vegas, happens. We're very careful about that, end quote. All I can say is we're threading it tighter there, but the bombs fall just after the events of Fallout New Vegas. That's really, co that's really convenient, by the way. Just after New Vegas. Ooh, yeah. Oh, hi. How are you? Okay, the second obnoxious moment of the video. Let's let's keep it serious. So, this is what a lot of us have been saying, which is, if it were to be a retcon, the verdict was still out on that, as far as I was concerned. But now we have the official word from Todd Howard, and as I said in my previous video, even if they completely bungled the timeline in that scene with the chalkboard, it was a really easy hole to dig themselves out of. 
now we know here that the destruction happened slightly after Fallout New Vegas, which can further inform some speculation, some theory crafting, and I think does make you know the goal here right is maybe that kind of rogue one moment for those of you who are star wars fans like the beginning of a new hope is a hey listen okay rogue one you you're star if you like that you're star jesus this is bad classic and it hit man he, maddie is probably really hyped about the acolyte He's probably wet because of how good it looks. It's all the better because now Rogue One exists where you see it literally lead in from the finale of that movie into the beginning of A New Hope, which is just one of my favorite moments in cinema, my very limited history and knowledge of cinema, admittedly, but I adore that stuff. So what I'm hoping for is the Fallout TV show can build something really special here that's going to make New Vegas even more epic, even more like, oh my God, we're, we're doing all this and now we know what that's hard to achieve if they destroyed New Vegas, though. Because, yeah, New Vegas looks extremely, extremely dead. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. Happens next. This is effectively now turning into, if you will, and I know people are going to get upset when I say this, because it's not literally it, but the fallout New Vegas, too. Like, Bethesda heard those demands, and while it's not Obsidian... Hell no. <laughs> The Fallout TV show is New Vegas, New Vegas 2, guys. It's New Vegas 2, guys. Oh, man. By the way, New Vegas 2 is going to happen at some point. It must. Because, again, Todd Howard would never allow New Vegas 2 to happen. I mean, that's just more disgrace on top of already his existing disgraces, right? But, again, Bethesda is owned by Microsoft. And, again, I can't stress this enough. Todd Howard has absolutely no say what Bethesda does. Todd Howard doesn't choose does the Fallout TV show happen or not. It's all just a bunch of lies. Because he is the known figurehead on, uh, you know, at the head of Bethesda for all this time. So Microsoft just ke keeps it like that because it's good for PR technically, right? Because all the super Bethesda fanboys would probably be pretty angry if Todd Howard just magically disappeared, right? But the reality is, Microsoft calls the shots. Todd Howard probably didn't honestly want uh, a Fallout TV show. But guess who did? Daddy Microsoft did. That's right. And again, Microsoft owns Bethesda. Todd Howard literally cannot say any no's to them. He has no say in this. Microsoft says, New Vegas 2 happening. Todd Howard has to say, yes, honey. The Fallout TV show happening? Yes, honey. Again, again, people don't understand how this works. You don't have a say, even though if you're the CEO of Bethesda, if Microsoft or Xbox tell you, you, you do this now. Because they own them. They own Todd Howard. If Todd Howard wants a paycheck, he does what they do. And trust me, Todd Howard wants a paycheck. Okay? So that's the thing. Because, you know... uh Halo happened as a TV show. All these things happened as a TV show, and suddenly, you know, Microsoft buys Bethesda, and guess what? Also, a Fallout TV show happens. Again, they're, they're, they're completely pulling the strings. So there is a chance even Todd Howard would, well, you know, probably not want it ever happening, that an actual Fallout uh, New Vegas 2 happens, because it's Microsoft calling the shots. In. It's not a role-playing game. We're getting it in a pretty exciting manner here. But most importantly, as we know, the bombs fall after New Vegas. And so that means that no timeline was disturbed. The moments that we referenced in prior videos for Fallout New Vegas, like where Angela Williams is talking about the Hoover Dam powering Shady Sands, or when you have the missionary talking about the capital of the NCR being Shady Sands, all of that is still intact by that moment in time that has not been disturbed whatsoever we'll talk about it a little bit more there's some additional information i just wanted to get into here from this interview where they write howard revealed that when bethesda first began talking with jonathan nolan about a potential fallout tv adaptation howard wanted something that quote would stand up as another entry in the series as opposed to retelling some of the games as we did and sort of treat it like we do a game and move the timeline forward and do some great things. And now that's what Nolan was thinking as well." End quote. Nolan adds that the show set out to honor the meticulous and detailed timeline set up by Bethesda and that creating a show not connected to the- 
but ghouls are these immortal magical beings that you can you know uh can survive almost anything including taking multiple shots to almost any part of their body unless it's a protagonist that shoots them and now they need to drink this magical uh jumbo juice thing that makes them not go feral because yeah i mean so faithful so faithful the brotherhood man i never liked the brotherhood of steel honestly i never was a fan of them enclave baby but yeah man you know i i even don't like what they did in the show with the with the brotherhood they're weak stupid don't care about even each other and they're cowards that's what the brotherhood now brotherhood of steel now is it's ridiculous the only good thing is that they didn't actually make it into a you know christian religion type of deal holy man and at least we got rid of all of those losers who are who were constantly screaming oh the brotherhood of steel is a christian organization you, you just don't know the lord where are you now tell me where are you now that's right you're crying in a corner because that's what you deserve loser Jesus. Yeah, the Brotherhood of Steel is a religious zealot organization, but they're not even close to actually being Christian, or in fact, any Abrahamic religion that we have. They just, they're just literally religious zealots in, 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 in a way that, you know, they, they do pretty much anything to protect what they think is, you know, well, but, but they think that they need to do and what is their thing. And that is technology. That's it the games was almost a non-starter everyone who worked on fallout all these games were so respectful and so careful to keep this a consistent universe and if we had gone a different direction the show would be the only thing that doesn't fit with that universe we didn't want to be in our own the china launched the nukes well technically yes that was also kind of confirmed but again who honestly cares when fallout 4 came out bethesda didn't give a shit about the lord anyway uh, if you look into the to uh, to the Fallout 4 implementations of things that happened, uh, it's, it's impossible. The Brotherhood of Steel shouldn't even exist at that point, especially in that location. So, you know, again, Bethesda never really cared about their lore. Bethesda never un really understood their own lore. So, yeah. Own private corner of an Elseworld or a different universe. I think that would be less meaningful to me watching the series to know it was completely divorced from the reality of the games and quote nolan admits this reminds me of fallout tactics which is a game admittedly i've played very little of i think the main time i played it was here on this channel in a little let's play style video and i wasn't really crazy about it it's interesting to see how many people had claimed that bethesda was in the process of destroying fallout when Interplay greenlit a tactics game that wasn't very good and a top-down beat-em-up Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance Diablo style game these were like very much not to the Fallout core but nonetheless I bring up tactics because that alongside the Brotherhood of Steel beat-em-up are these quote semi-canon games many people don't acknowledge them the only time I saw the tactics Brotherhood of Steel chapter acknowledged was during the pre Fallout 4 hype where we were breaking down like which chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel had moved into the Commonwealth and, and how they would have this, this big airship, where that exactly came from. And those games widely, from what I've seen, I'm not saying they're horrible, I actually kind of find the Brotherhood of Steel beat em up game to be a guilty pleasure because I love the Dark Alliance game. So to have a Fallout game kind of like that and being able to play as a ghoul is, is really awesome. But yeah, when you take a good peek at here in the entirety of the Fallout fandom, those games are seldom acknowledged. And I think the TV show didn't want to be in that position. So where does this position the Fallout TV show? It puts it in a spot to do something really unique. Now, Fallout 1 and 2 were more direct follow-ups to one another than really what you see in 3 to 4 or 3 to New Vegas. All these games, I feel, during the Bethesda era. New Vegas was a follow-up uh, to 1 and 2. Uh, when I, by the way, a lot of people are uh, saying this, that I'm wrong when I say that uh, uh, Fallout lore is in stasis, that, you know, it's just the universe and then it's like this small bubble and then the story gets told. I actually am not talking about Fallout 1 and 2 and technically New Vegas because those uh, those things actually kind of push the plot forward, yes. that They, they establish things and they are uh, working towards pushing, 
uh, the world forward. The other games don't, though. So, you know, that that's kind of... Well, 4 arguably kind of does if you pick the Institute. But, you know, not <laughs> the Institute is definitely not going to be canon. Institute, Institute is dead, 100%. Had their not fully though not fully but you know they they are gonna be something that barely exists most likely in the tv series if they even appear moments of acknowledging one another's coexistence like i've been going through the nuka world dlc gradually and seeing sierra from the nuka cola quest that is in fallout 3 in the nuka world dlc like there's a degree of continuity here that makes sense that's fun that pays back diehard fans but you don't for example in fallout 4 like hear this mega reference to project purity and the story builds upon what james and the lone wanderer had accomplished in fallout 3 like you really don't get any of that you just get a new story in a new pocket of the world what the fallout tv show is doing is once again kind of paying an homage to the originals in a direct follow-up to a story and in this case the direct follow-up which you don't really understand until the very last two episodes of the show is a direct follow-up to fallout new vegas and i'll go ahead and say it again i don't think as a fallout fan i could have asked exactly the destruction of todd howard's blemish for more i expected bethesda to tie this into their own version of fallout but taking new vegas bringing the story forward in the timeline evolving upon what happened there speaks to the consequences of the events there speaks to the importance of them makes new vegas an even more important game in the franchise. no it doesn't no it flat out doesn't if new vegas is destroyed if shady sands and the NCR are absolutely gonzo at this point that that makes them irrelevant. That makes their stories kind of relevant. And now, I, I will say this. Hey, if New Vegas got destroyed, but with, with actual reason, not just, oh, well, look at that, New Vegas is gone, have fun there. You know, if New Vegas got destroyed, that's fine by me. But, you know, I can, but make it make sense. Make it, make it a narrative thing, not just show New Vegas being destroyed. Because if New Vegas is just destroyed like that, so what happened? Did the NCR win? Did the Legion win? And if the NCR now is destroyed and weak, why... Why, 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 why do we not see, you know, uh, Caesar's Legion coming back in? Because even though if Caesar is dead, no matter what, you know, you, you still have a structure of power that, you know, takes care of the Legion, even if it splits up. So, you know, again, you can't destroy New Vegas, just show, oh, it's gone, it's gone, and say, oh, it, New Vegas mattered, because that means it didn't. Okay, I'm completely fine with New Vegas being destroyed, but at least show it, explain how it happened and why it happened, not just, you know, destroy it. Franchise can also set up a New Vegas 2 brilliantly, might I add. It can also set up Bethesda doing another game on the West Coast, which I think they're going to do. That's always been my prediction. Like a San Francisco set Fallout game would be pretty awesome, I imagine. Like there's a pink head goals. Oh boy, they're gonna be immune to everything but pronouns. Lot of great options here. So what it does here is sets up a world of potential. Again, there are a set of questions that I brought up in my last video that I think Bethesda still has to answer. There's a few, if you will, inconsistencies with Mr. House that I think you can rationalize, but we need a good explanation on that. Another one someone brought up. No, you can't. In the comments yesterday that I forgot to ask is like, how did Vault 32 get cleaned up in like 24 hours? Who did? Yes, again, nothing in the vaults that takes place makes any sense. That exactly. There's a couple of threads that are left unexplained. A couple. How about... Lucy's mom, Raiders, there. There's at least 20 threads that are left unexplained and make no sense. And again, I always say that the verdict is still out until season two. I think Fallout season one managed to complete its main character stories pretty well while leaving open a couple of question marks for things that we can explore in the upcoming season two. But if they Dude, we don't even know why the Vault 31 opened at random um, for, for Lucy's brother. We, we don't even know that. <laughs> why did it open at random? 
how how does that even work because he needs to get into the vault that's how it works there is no explanation given he needs to get into the vault the riders are incompetent they can't figure out for him to actually have a like smart way of getting into the vault they don't answer those in season two then i think there will be more problems and we'll talk about it then but as we see here timeline firmed up new vegas confirmed as canon not just by emil pagliarulo like we had covered before but the man the myth the legend todd howard and they talk a bit about when shady sands was the liar todd howard yep destroyed which is after the events of new vegas so they are threading the needle this could lead to a situation where new vegas also could feel awkward if we're going to be critical of anything here because again the ncr was this strong force for so long and todd howard's comments basically confirm we're going to see the fall of shady sands in season two at least i think that's a safe assumption based on where the story is trending and that it takes place after fallout new vegas so we're going to see that fall and so now they need to create something that is plausible that you can buy into and go oh this is why the ncr collapsed so quickly and this capital got destroyed and everyone was kind of out for themselves from that point forward the capital got destroyed because it got nuked that's it and they have to explain why shady sands is in LA what's going on with the boneyard there's still questions to be answered so no doubt that you can still give a critical eye toward the TV show but here we see the official word is that it happened after New Vegas and so we'll see of course what year that is that'll help firm some things up this is definitely lining up to be yeah well I don't care if they actually mess up the timeline you know it's it's just a date on a chalkboard I don't care about that it's I, I don't think it means anything now admittedly again will fallout new vegas survive no todd howard's gonna nuke it out of uh, out of fall a bit because he hates it anyway this was quizzer said said thanks for watching that was many plays mr shill plays or you know that's how probably it goes anyway have a nice day bye bye